The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be Repentance. a blessing to the world. Now, we repentance page, lends sure itself in two channel. strands. And turn on that we have repentance, so if you like repentance A and repentance B. To it. Make or sure repentance down, 1, repentance 2. On more videos. Now, the you. first repentance has to do with the unbeliever who has to repent for the remission of his or her sins so that he or she will come into relationship with God. I want to repeat that again. The first repentance is the call on the unbeliever to turn from his sins and come to Christ so that he will become a child of God. So the first repentance is for the remission of sins so that one will be called into the body of Christ or one can be called the child of God so that by the Spirit, that fellow can say, Abba, Father. So all of us here, if you have given your life to Jesus, if you have responded to this call and you have repented, you have become a Christian. You have fulfilled the repentance one. But in the course of our Christian journey, repentance is still expected. So repentance is not the one that brings you into relationship with Christ is once. But in your Christian journey, there is space for you to be repenting so that you can have continual fellowship with God. So the first one is to build relationship with God as a child, where you become the child of God, he becomes your father. The second one is when you have become a child and you are in your father's house, whatever you do that is wrong, you repent so that fellowship with the father will continue. So the second is for closer fellowship with the father. The first is for relationship with God. With the Father. Are we together? Fine. So the first one brings us to Christ. The second one calls us to walk with him. Now we want to look at the first part. The first part, repentance and faith in Christ, is a means or the means to entry into the kingdom of God. To repent is to change one's mind. What did I say? To repent is to change one's mind. Now hold that one closely. And it is a means to enter into the kingdom of God. You cannot come into the kingdom of God if you don't repent and have faith in Christ. You cannot, you dare not come in. You just don't join the people of God. No. You have to be called. And the space granted us so that we can have that calling is for us to repent and Accept Jesus as Lord. So it is the means of entry into the kingdom of God. Let's read Matthew chapter 21. I'll take from 28 to 31. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work together in my vineyard. I will not, now, I want you to pay close attention to this. I'm going to talk about a man and his two children. He wants them to do something for him. And look at their reactions. So I will read again. What do you think? This is coming from Jesus. There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work together in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later, he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what the father wanted? 
The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Let's go to 29. I will not, was the reply of the first son. He answered. But later, he changed his mind and went. Has he repented? Yeah, I said to repent is to what? To change one's mind. So when the father said, go and work for me in the farms or in the vineyard, he says, I will not. But the Bible said later, he changed his mind. Then the second one said, I will say that I will go. But he did not go. It means that he also changed his mind. So in both cases, they all repented. Huh? So repentance can be for good or for evil. Some of us can repent and go back to the world. <laughs> can shake your head and say, this thing is enough. Let me go back. It is repentance. Repentance is a change of mind. It's to turn or to return. Now, if you are going to, let's say, uh, this one is like Malata, eh? and then you decide that I'm no longer going to go to Malata. I want to go to, will I be right if I say Kokomremi? Yeah, so Kokomremi. It means that, now, the decision is in my mind. Nobody knows. But I was heading towards Malata. If I decide in my mind to go to Kokomremi, what I will do is to turn or to return and face another direction. This is what we mean by repentance. A change of mind to another direction. So when we are saying that this man, the first one repented, the second one repented. Everyone had his own direction. But the conclusion is what I want you to pay attention to. The verse 31. Which of the two did what, what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors, now they are supposed to be sinners because they were collecting taxes in favor of Rome and impoverishing their own people, the Jews, if you like. And they were amassing wealth from this. So the common tax collector was hated by their fellow Jews because they saw them as evil people who were using tax collection to kind of follow them. So they didn't like them. So the tax collector is a sinner. Then the prostitutes. So that one too, in Jesus' time, the prostitute was also considered a sinner by the Pharisees who think that they know. Then Jesus is saying that they are all entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. What he's trying to say is that he's looking at the task collector and the Pharisee as the second son who said, I will not, but later change his mind. And then he's saying that you people are the I will, but you, have, you, are, you soon change your mind. So if you don't take care, the task collectors will go ahead of you. Are we together? Yeah. If you don't take care, People you never expected will be found in heaven because later on they changed their mind. Uh, in 1985, there was this general convention at Laboni. That was the last general convention the Church of Pentecost held. I was part of that convention. So yes, once we were going around singing and jumping, those days, we the young ones, we usually would not take any seat or bench. We, will, we enjoy going around and jumping and dancing. And then whilst we were doing that, I saw this guy. He was a dining hall prefect in Tama Secondary School at that time. But that guy was so wicked. So wicked. He could knock you with a stone. Now, he would do this. I will knock him. But he has a stone in him. 
between the fingers. You knock it with a stone. Meanwhile, he's a dining hall professor. You can imagine how you treat people in regards to food and hunger. <laughs> when I saw him clapping, I was shocked. Then I dodged because I was still afraid of him even under the tent. Because I thought that if he saw me, say, Hey, what are you coming? To? Kneel down. Because he has caused me to kneel down in front of his house in Dansuma. He saw me in the same area and said, You also live in Dansuma. Kneel down. <laughs> you also live in Dansuma. Kneel down. That was my punishment for me living in Dansuma. As he was also sojourning there, then kneel down. I knelt down in front of his house. He went inside. A certain man came and said, small boy, why are you here? I couldn't say that. The senior said, I should kneel down. I looked at his face. The man said, are you sick? No, I'm sick. He said, get up. So I got up and I ran away. But I saw this very person at the convention. I was shocked. When we went back to school, he joined the scripture union. I was still not comfortable with this young because he is a task collector. <laughs> task collector. Several years down the line, I'd come from South Africa as a missionary on a fellow, and then my vehicle broke down at Offenso. So we're going to look for someone to get some mechanics to fix it. When I got out of the car, here was this guy with Bible in his hands. Where are you going to? I'm a presiding elder. <laughs> I'm a presiding elder. You see? So some people can go ahead of us and all that they need it's a change of mind one day. One day a change of mind. Change of mind. So once you have changed your mind and you have come to Christ, don't change it again. No? Otherwise, some people will go ahead of you. It is a means of entering into the kingdom of God. To repent is to change one's mind. As a theological category, repentance is used to describe the deliberate turning of a person from being against God to becoming obedient and living in right relationship with God. So when a theologian says repentance, he's saying that somebody turning from being against God and coming to live in relationship with God as a son or as a daughter. It is a sense of inexpressible shame and degradation and also a sudden realization that God demonstrated his love for us even when we were still sinners. Now we are saying that I'm moving this way and then suddenly I realize that ah what a shame. This is who I am. When you are helpless about your life and you see that ah this one what can I do? Suddenly there's a realization that Jesus died on the cross for you. And then you turn and you embrace the cross. You are saved. Yes. In the Garden of Eden, when man saw his nakedness, he ran away from God. But in repentance, when you see your sin, you go towards God and you embrace his salvation. That is repentance. It is not the running away from God, but embracing the finished work of Christ. So when we go out and we tell the sinner, please come to Jesus, repent and come, we are just saying that you are helpless about your sin. You are helpless about your shame. But Christ has done it on the cross on your behalf. He has died in your place. Come to him. That realization is what we call repentance. Paul says, the opening of the eyes. In Acts chapter 26, from verse 17 and 18. Shall we read that one? Acts chapter 26. 
from 17 and 18. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I'm sending you to, to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. And do what? Open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. So repentance is the opening of eyes to see who you are, who you truly are, as God sees you. And then your acceptance of Jesus as Christ brings you into relationship with God. When that happens, the Bible says that you are saved. Hallelujah. Let's look at Paul himself and let's take his testimony. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 onwards. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. So Paul says that, all that I was doing, I was zealous against Christ. But I was doing that in what? Ignorant and what? Unbelief. That's why we are saying that it is a sudden realization. It is the opening of eyes. So to him, he is saying that my eyes were blinded. But somehow, now I can see. Hallelujah. That is his testimony. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me in abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now look at how he's ending in verse 17. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. You see, he's thanking God. He's thanking God because he was so zealous. He was, he was doing all these things in ignorance and unbelief. Now somehow, God has opened his eyes and said, Father, I thank you to the Kenny mortal, the invisible, the only God who has saved me. Thank you. Are we together? So that is how we should see a sinner. When you see somebody smoking, or when you see somebody in armed robbery, if you see anybody in any evil act, don't just, don't just be insulting, or don't despise the fellow. They are blinded. The Bible said the enemy has blinded them. We need to pray and talk to them about Christ. Maybe their eyes will be open so that they will see their nakedness and accept Jesus as Lord. Hallelujah. Are we together? Now, what is the nature of repentance? How is repentance like? The nature of repentance. Many people unfortunately associate repentance with emotions like crying. We used to have this sister who was so smart, very, very smart. Smart in evil things. And yet, she was a very good singer. Once upon a time, we went to church, and there was this strong message, and we thought that today our sister has repented. Because the way she was crying. So when we closed, all the young guys we met, and said, oh, today as for sister, so, so, and so, we thank God. A week later, Somebody came to report that this sister is chasing the husband. So, oh, so she didn't repent. So all the weeping and the crying and all that amounted to nothing. So sometimes we associate repentance to emotions, but it is not so. If you ask Judas, Judas will explain this thing to you. You see, Judas was very emotional. He went to the chief priest. And then he threw the money to the floor. And they said, take it. 
I've betrayed an innocent blood. And so my, then they told him, what does that concern us? Take your money, it is yours. And then the Bible says Judas started weeping. This is Judas on the way to betraying Christ and he has done it. And then if he had truly repented, he started weeping. Where do you think he should have headed to? Uh, where should he have gone? If Judas had truly repented, where should he have headed to? It's the one in white. He should have gone to the other 11 disciples. Would that be correct? I think that should be correct. If truly he had repented, now you were 12. Because of you, the young guy is saying that 11. Eh? So if he has really repented, he was crying. And he had thrown the money on the floor. And the chief priest said, take it. Take it, it is yours. Then Judas started weeping. But he will not go to the disciples. If he had truly repented, he should have gone to the disciples. But he rather, he bought a field and then he hung himself and died. If sometimes repentance could be associated with emotions. Sometimes people are, are emotional about what they have done. They weep and then they change their mind. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'll take 9 and 10. Yet now I'm happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. Your sorrow led you to what? Repentance. If your sorrow does not lead you to repentance, then it is not repentance. It is remorse. When no, but one sacra. Huh? It is just you are being remorseful. You are just sorry about what you have done. But repentance is a change of mind. So you have to turn or to return. If you are just sorry about insulting your husband and you couldn't say, I'm, I'm sorry, and then you stop what you are doing and you, still, you, are, you are still doing it, you have not repented. <laughs> you have not repented at all. Are we together? fine so that is about the nature of repentance the nature of repentance is repentance is not just emotions or observing religious rites some people go to church going to church does not mean you have repented no no going to church does not mean you have repented sweeping the church out does not mean you have repented praying does not mean you have repented reading the bible does not mean you have repented putting a cross on does not mean you have repented. Now, what is important in this regard is not putting on a cross or whatever. Let's read Galatians 6 verse 15. So far as repentance is concerned, Galatians 6 15. Galatians 6 verse 15. Can we read together? Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. Now, circumcision or uncircumcision is religious right. Now, the Jew will pride himself in circumcision because it was a covenant between Abraham and God or the nation of Israel and God. So, every Israelite, every Israel male prides himself in circumcision. It's a religious right. That is why David will tell Goliath, that uncircumcised man, Philistine. Because he pride himself in the circumcision. It was a religious right. But he says neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Now you cannot be a new creation when you have not repented. What is important is what? A new creation. A new creation is what counts. It is inward change of mind but by an outward action what did i say repentance is an inward change of mind 
But when you change your mind on the inside of yourself, no one will see it. What will prove that you have repented is that it must be backed by an outward action. It must be backed by an outward action. So repentance is an inward change of mind backed by an outward action. Let's demonstrate this in the prodigal son. Now, the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. Let's take it from verse 18. This is the prodigal son. Now he's going to spend all that he had. And he wants to come back home. He decided to leave home. He requested the daddy to give him the share of his estate. And so he went and then led a wild life and squandered all that he had. Now he wants to come back home. Wanting to come back home means that he, is re he has repented. Huh? He has repented in his original decision. He wants to come back home. But let's look at verse 18. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Do you think he was saying this with the mouth or it was just a thought? You can just think about that. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now, this is, I believe, a thought that has come in his mind. Cut verse 20. So he got up and went to the father. Verse 18, 19, he's saying that I'll set out and go to my father. Then verse 20 says, so he went to the father. That is repentance. I'll read the first line of 18 and the second line of 20. And let's see how it will look like. I will set out and go back to my father. So he got up and went to the father. That is repentance. You cannot say that I will go, 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 I will go. Every day I'll go. I'll go to the father. Every day I'll go back to my father. Every day I'll go back to my father. Every day I'll go back. Then Jesus will come. Pa, na, 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 na. And you never went to the father. You never. But this one is saying, I'll go to my father. And then the Bible says he set out and went to the father. That is repentance. An inward change of mind. That is backed by an outward action. That is why John told the people who were coming to him for him to baptize that you brood of vipers. If you think that now you want to come to the Lord, show it by works that befit your repentance. That is why James also says, show me your faith without works and I'll prove my faith by my works. Works do not save, but works are a testimony of your faith. So that if you think that you have believed in Christ, prove it by works. That is what repentance means. An inward change of mind backed by an outward action. Now, Paul says that they didn't know me. They never knew me. But now they heard that the one who was persecuting the saints is not preaching the gospel. And because of me, they praised God. So he was persecuting the saints. But now he has turned and he's preaching the gospel. The same thing that he was angry at, now he laughs. And the Bible said, he said, because of me, people praise God. That is a changed life, a repentant life. Hallelujah. Now, J.I. Parker says this. Repentance is changing of one's mind. So that one's views, values, goals... And ways are changed. And one's whole life is lived differently. If you have truly repented, your life must be led differently. Your values, what you put premium on, what you like, your goals, are all changed in repentance. See, sometimes you hear somebody saying that, ah, when we used to go to the disco, pa. if you have repented, and you still desire the disco days, you have no change. 
You'll be deceiving yourself. Because your whole life is supposed to be lived what? Differently. That is repentance. Repentance. Repenting means starting a new life. Can you repeat that after me? Repenting means starting a new life. So if we say you have truly repented, then you must start a new life. A changed life. Living your life differently. Now the repentance number two is a sense of continuous limitation. Now, when you are born again, John says that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What John is saying is that if we say we have not sinned, then we deceive ourselves. Then we, we make him a liar. Because sometimes we, 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 we err, we sin. So John is saying that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. That is to recognize our continuous limitation as humans. So sometimes we do what God does not like. Otherwise, 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. This is what 1 John chapter 3, 9 says. I want you to pay close attention to this particular verse. I want us to read together. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Because God's seed remain in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Can you read it again? Yeah. No one, yourself, myself, no one, born of God will continue to sin how many of us are born of God lift up your hands and see this scripture is for you no one will continue to sin no one because God's seed remains in him the nature of God is in him they cannot do you agree with this one they cannot go on sinning you don't look at somebody's face and say yes. Sir. Look at yourself. The tendency to sin and what you are doing. Can you answer in affirmative that this one is correct? Anyway, you can't take it away from scripture. So let it be there. Huh? I want to read it again. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Others, did you hear it? Is it wrong? How should he have stated it? So that he would have accommodated your, your weakness. <laughs> no one, if you are born of God, you don't continue to sin. That one would have been easier. He says he cannot sin because he is born of God. What does this mean? It only means that to us, Sin is not a weakness, but sin is a mistake. Now listen. Because this is who you are. Once you are born of God, you cannot sin. So if you sin, don't say that, oh God, I am weak. You are not weak. You have made a mistake. Now if you make a mistake because you have missed the mark and sin is missing the mark. If you miss a mark, you have made a mistake. If you have made a mistake, what do you do? You correct it. So if for any reason you fall into fornication, so oh God of sin, that is not who you are. That is the new life does not accommodate this. This one is a mistake. If it is a mistake, then correct it. Don't continue in it and say that I am weak. I am weak, but thou art mighty. No, 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 no. Don't cry over that. It is a mistake. Correct it. I will ask a simple question. Don't get it wrong, those of you here. One plus one. Huh? It's what? Two. If you write three, what is that? 
It is what? It is wrong. It's a mistake. What do you do? You correct it. If you don't follow Christ with this mentality, you will never grow. This one is supposed to bring you in fellowship. All of us are children of God. But if you keep sin with you, it will distance you from God. Sometimes we sing some songs like, Nearer my God to thee. Is God far away? Huh? Is God far away from any of us? No. We are in his hands. What the song means is that closer fellowship. So, if you keep sin, it will distance you from God. Anytime that you see that you have said something that you shouldn't say, say, Father, forgive me. If you say, ah, what is this? You two, you are a fool. Father, this is my mouth. You shouldn't be telling people fool. That is not how the new creation is. That is not how Jesus would have spoken. He said this in me. Father, forgive me. And then you tell yourself, this thing, I have to watch it. I don't have to allow anger to rule my life. So that I will tell my wife, you too. So that I will beat my wife. So if you beat your wife yesterday, don't repeat it today. And, and then tell yourself that it is her fault. No, it is not her fault. Yesterday's was a mistake. Correct it. That is not who you are. If you knew the sort of person you are, God sees you as holy. If you were not holy, the Holy Spirit would not have come into you. So blessed are you who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. His delight, what he wants, should rule your heart. So for you, sin should be a mistake. It shouldn't be just something that you say that I'm weak. No. Sin is not about weakness. See? If the other time I was saying that we are a family of lions, eh? what is the weakness about lions? No. Don't joke with sin. It is the only thing that can keep you far away from God. Don't joke with sin. So sin is a mistake. It is not a weakness. In Revelation chapter 2, all the churches in the Asia Minor, the seven churches, God called them to repentance. But these were churches. So you can say that they were full of what? Christians. How will you become a Christian? You must repent and accept Christ. So all these churches were born again churches. But let's go to Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2. Let's read verse 5. Revelation 2, 5. Consider how far you are falling. Repent and do the things you did at first. Repent and what? Do the things you did at first. Now this is to a church. Verse 16. Repent therefore. Otherwise I will soon come to you. And will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. That is to a church. That is to a church. Now, verse 21. I have given her time to repent. That is to a, a woman in a church. Verse 22. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering. And I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of their ways this is to people in the church so in our christian work there is a need for repentance when we sin but you must see sin or sinning as a mistake so that you don't keep on doing it now if you want to see that someone is not clever at all especially the children when you take their exercise books or notebooks you will see that there are a lot of corrections huh? But the worst of them, you see that sometimes they correct the very same place till it makes a hole. Huh? Because one plus one is supposed to be two. The teacher says two. Then he writes three. So, ah, what is it? And he raises it. Rise four, he raises it. And then the paper is torn. Don't let your paper tear. 
Eh? I want you to love Jesus so much so that you wouldn't want to sin against him. Me, that is my mentality. I love the man so much so that I don't want to do anything against him. I don't want to do anything to disturb him. I love Jesus. And I don't want to do anything to disturb him. So I wouldn't even do something and say that, God, you know that, you see, I'm weak. No. Love him. And if you love him, Jesus said, you obey my commandments. Saying to us, it's a mistake. So he's calling all the church in Asia Manor to repent us. In fact, when you do not repent, what you are effectively doing is keeping Jesus outside the door of your heart. Revelation 3.20 says that I am standing at the door and knocking. If you open, I will come in. So don't keep him out of your heart. If he, you are not his or you don't belong to him, he will not keep on knocking. He would have gone somewhere else. But you belong to him and you are his. He wants to come in but sin is knocking the door, has locked the door. So I want you to be someone who has space for Jesus. So that Jesus will be comfortable in your home. So that you will not be outside the door knocking. You will keep him outside the door with an unrepented spirit. What are the imp importance of repentance? When you repent, you maintain a close fellowship with the Father. That one, I've said it over and over again. Number two. We need to repent of our sins and ask for forgiveness of, from God because of the accuser of the brethren, the devil. If you don't repent, the devil will accuse you and he will lock you and you will make your prayers of none effect. If you don't confess your sins, you may think that God's hand is not able to deliver you. But the Bible says that his sins are not short, that he cannot deliver. The reason why he does not stretch forth his hand is because of sin. And if you keep sin in your heart, the devil will keep on accusing you and you will frustrate your life. So be careful of sin. Revelation 20 verse 10. If you repent of your sins as a Christian, it demonstrates that you love Jesus. John 14, 15 and then 35, 31. The last one that I want to say and then I'll bring this message to a close. When you repent of your sins, it is a proof that the light in you is not darkness. Now listen. Matthew 6, 23. When you repent of your sins, what that means is that you recognize your, your sin. So you are turning from it. What that means is that the light in you is not darkness. Sometimes you keep on sinning and you are joking with sin. You are joking with sin. Now you disturb your conscience. Now you sin and you don't think you have even sinned. When somebody says, brother, what are you doing nowadays? You don't come to church. It's coming to church by force. You are going far away. Now the light in you is becoming darkness. Sister, why are you doing that? Am I the only person doing it? Now you do it and you don't see it. We call that light in you is becoming darkness. Sister, why don't you stop? Oh, stop! Even the darkness is they do it. The light in you is becoming darkness. Until now, your heart and your conscience is seared. You leave church now. You wear short pants because you have repented. You move among a community of people. Who teach people how to shock people that they themselves, they are not shocked. The pants is like this. It's on top like that. And you cut to walk in the midst of some young men. She shocks the young guys, but she herself, she's not shocked. What is happening is that the light in you is darkness now. But once you see your sin, you sin and the Holy Ghost convicts you and you realize that this is what I've done, it is wrong, it means that you are still alive. It means that there's still light in you. Take hold of that and repent. Don't be joking with sin until your conscience is destroyed. 
Maybe. When we talk about repentance, we have always thought of the unbeliever. But today I'm saying that repentance is in two kinds. The first one is to, for the unbeliever to come to Christ, to be related as a child of God. The second one is for us who are born again, so that our conscience is not destroyed, so that the light in us will not become darkness. Have you gotten something this morning? Yeah. You need to repent. Say that now as we are going home. There's somebody that you are not on talking terms with. What are you going to do? <laughs> I have been a pastor for a while. I've seen with my naked eyes. When I've said, let us move. Keep on shaking one another. Then my eyes were we're following two people that I know they don't talk. I was watching them. <laughs> I was watching them. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the when this when they saw that they were heading the same direction, this one said, I can't see you. <laughs> I saw it ready. I can see you who? In who? Yeah. I can see you. And this one to the glory of the Lord. <laughs> Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, it is that which you reap. My heart is for us to produce very good Christians. People who are like Jesus. People who walk in the midst of the people. And these are the aroma of Christ. I'm praying that you'll be one of them. I want to go back home repenting at your attitude towards your spouse repent at your attitude at the workplace even if you go to work and you are not you don't do you don't work the way you are expected and people say that you are lazy you can repent of your laziness yeah. when you sleep in bed you don't even find the need of tidying up the place you wake up and you just go people say that why why what kind of person are you you can repent of that repentance is not only about sin it's about attitude your whole life you have to live, must be lived differently.